current stage of beta, there are six playable races to choose from. For the purposes of this video, I'm not going to go into the bonuses or attributes of each race because as beta progresses, those may change and I'm just too lazy to make more videos. Instead, we're going to discuss the cultures, mannerisms, and other traits that each race displays. First, let's talk about humans, you know, like you and me. That's pretty much it. Let's move on. Next, we have androids, artificially intelligent constructs developed by pretty much every race in the galaxy. They usually look similar to the race that created them, but they can look like anything. Depending on their programming, they could be incredibly lifelike or laughably stale. The most common androids you'll find were designed to take care of menial tasks and labor for their fleshy masters. You'll also find combat variants that were designed to handle high-risk situations without endangering life. But an android can look and act pretty much any way they want. Next up we have the Furyax, a savage and ugly race with an unhealthy obsession for violence. Their hierarchy is determined by force and most of their arguments end in blood. They're known for their scrunched, bat-like faces, long pointy ears, and many sharp teeth. Although their appearance is intimidating, there are nice fury acts that aren't interested in violence or masochism. But these fury acts are often ridiculed by their peers for being pansies. They come from a very hostile jungle planet called Furia, where everything can eat you. It's like Australia on steroids. The fish can kill you, the bugs can kill you, the plants can kill you, everything can kill you. So they're very well known for their survival skills and their ability to eat just about anything. They're also notorious for their weaponry, which is very common with abyss pirates and criminals for the variety of blades, spikes, and other flesh-rending properties it has. Next up we have the Ankino, a very quirky and peculiar race that resemble bipedal chameleons. They have big eyes that can orbit individually, they can change their skin color at will, they have a prehensile tail and a sticky tongue. How cool is that? They're pretty small though. The largest are about the size of a human child. Because of their small size and their ability to change color at will, most of them are really good at sneaking around. And a lot of them have an unnatural affinity for technology. Not a whole lot is known about the Ankingo because humans only recently discovered them and haven't yet found their home planet. Most run-ins with the Ankingo are surprise attacks or hit and run strikes from their cloaked spacecraft. Well, they'll fly down to the planet, take what they need, and leave. Occasionally during these raids, some on Kingo will be left behind, either by choice or by force. Most of those have been integrated into society. Planet-side on Kingo are typically very passive. On Kingo as a whole are accepted by fringe worlds, and a small percentage has integrated itself into society. Moving on, we have Marfins. They are a tall and lanky race similar to humans, pale in complexion, and known for their stubbornness and stoicism. A short Marfin is about 6 feet tall, while the average is between 7 and 7.5. They typically have sunken, bony features, and are adorned with a variety of piercings, tattoos, and other body modifications to identify their lineage and accomplishments. Many Marfins will also undergo cosmetic surgery for a more intimidating appearance. Pointed ears, filed teeth, or ritual scarring are all very common among Marfin society. Their home planet is notoriously barren and difficult to survive on. As such, Marfins have developed a society based on strength of the body and mind. Weak Marfins are quickly sold into slavery or simply killed because resources are too thin to support them. They take pride in their combat prowess and are widely known for their ability to make high quality weaponry. Marfin weapons are some of the best in the galaxy and families will frequently pass down their weapons from generation to generation to make sure it doesn't fall into the wrong hands. Finally, we have the Salakii. Salakii are basically shark people. Their planet is mostly covered in water and they rule both the land and sea. They typically stick to their subterranean cave networks that honeycomb their planet and they usually prefer to stay in darkness. Because of their large and frightening appearance, they haven't spread too far throughout the galaxy. But on the fringe worlds, they are generally accepted into the melting pot. They are well known for their ability to take punishment and the mindless frenzy they go into when a fight has started. Most of them will mind their own business, but once provoked, they'll tear apart several enemies without hesitation and feed upon the remains to shrug off the damage they sustained while fighting. Because of this, many Salakii take up pit fighting as a way to secure finances when on a new planet. Though their savagery is well documented, it's important to note that they're still an intelligent race and they've accomplished space travel. Just like all the other races in this video, these are just general stereotypes for the Salakii. There are always exceptions to the rules. You're going to find a Furiax pacifist, on Kingo gladiators, Salakii, scientists. You'll find Marfin scholars, and everything in between. It's totally up to you. So don't feel pressured to make a certain character within the parameters of this video. You can be anything you want. This is just what each race is known for. 